You guys don't catch me saying something I'm gonna regret, probably not. Yes, mom. Good morning, everyone. Uh, how did the homework go? Did you guys get the chance to do the homework? Yes. Okay, do you guys have any questions? As I said, the way we always start is I'm asking you questions about the homework. So the problems that you couldn't do, you're not sure you know how to do them, uh, please, Put your question on chat or just say them. The only question that I had problem with was one uh, D. Problem number that's about differentiation. One B. Okay, anybody else from the integration part? Okay, you put them on chat. Uh, one D, okay. So that's about derivatives. Anything else? And uh, two Luca, two E. Okay. Very good. Okay, so first I look at number one B and D, and then uh, I will go to number two. Be uh, but before going to number two, I will have to remind you the property of indefinite integer. But first we do number one. One is just for you guys to remember the uh, differentiation. That's really my goal. So I look at number one. And the question is find the derivative of the function f of x equal cosine five x. times e to the x squared. All right, so this is a function. The question is simplifying the derivative. So the first thing we uh, see when we look at this function is the product of two functions. So immediately we should go after the product rule. Okay. So the derivative. I see what the product rule reminds you product rule. Derivative of the first times the second function plus the first 
times the derivative of the second. So it's going to be equal to. So now we use the product rule. Now we have to go from here to here. If we notice, look carefully at this function, we realize that there is an inside function, which is the 5x. That's my inside function. So I have to use the product rule, sorry, I have to use the chain rule immediately. So from here to here, we're using the chain. Okay, and the chain rule tells me that this is equal to the derivative of the outside, which is the sine of 5x, evaluated at the inside function, times it with the derivative of the inside. And my inside is 5x. So that's really my inside. Okay. And the derivative of the inside is derivative of 5x is 5 times e to the x squared plus cosine 5x. That's not, there's nothing we want to do about that. Times e to the x squared. Again, we have inside and outside. And this is my inside function here. OK, so the chain rule. So again, from here to here, we're going to use the chain. Okay. So what's the derivative? It's the derivative of the exponential, which is the exponential itself, evaluated at the inside function, times the derivative of the exponential. Sorry, the derivative of the inside. The inside is x squared. The derivative of the inside is 2x. All right, and of the problem. So it's product rule. First, because we have a product to function, and at every step we have to use the chain rule because we have a composition of two functions. Question? Please feel free to ask your question as I move on. Now, number one, D. All right, number one, D, what is it about? So, number one, D is basically my goal is for you to remember chain rule. So it's ln of x plus c, c is a constant. Um, professor? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, um, so do we have to memorize the uh, derivatives of the trig trigonometric functions like cosine? Absolutely. No question asked. Um, I see. Thank you. when we go back face to face, hopefully uh, you guys will take your quizzes and your exam, you will have no notes available. So things have to be totally memorized, all right? But within reason, I mean, I'm not gonna ask you to memorize big formulas, but derivative of sine, cosine, tangent, secant, those has to be totally memorized. Those are basic, like the ABC of, of, of calculus. Very nice. Okay, so this is my function. I need to find its derivative. Again, I look at this and I see chain rule. That's the composition of two functions. This is here my inside. That's the inside function. Okay, so what's going to be derivative? It's the derivative of the ln, that's the outside, which is one over whatever I have inside. times the derivative of the inside function. Okay. Now, this is equal to this. There is nothing I can do about the first piece times. Okay, now I need to define the derivative of the inside. Okay. The derivative of x. It's one plus C is a constant. I just drop it. The derivative of sine X, all right? That's another chain rule is sine. And this is again, another insight. So it's going to be 
the derivative of the outside, the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine, evaluated at 4x times the derivative of 4x, which is and of the problem. Questions before I move on? Any question? Okay. Did you guys copy? I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Could you move that second part of the equation into the top of the fraction? The one plus C oh, cosine four X times four. Absolutely. It's like telling me a third times two is basically two third, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna to move to the second part, indefinite integral. But as I said before, I started the uh, answering the second part, I would like to remind you the property of indefinite integral. And what do I actually mean by that? I mean the following, uh, let's say, so far we know how to find antiderivative of x squared, right? That's a big deal. But what if I take x squared and create a new function, which is, x squared multiplied by a constant, let's say four. And the question is, what's the antiderivative of the new function? So if I have a function x squared that I know is antiderivative multiplied by a constant, what's the antiderivative of the new function? So the first property of the integral tells me the following. K is a constant. The word constant is absolutely necessary. So I will underline it because that. The antiderivative or the indefinite integral of k times f. So if I have a function f multiplied by a constant is equal to, but the first property tells me, if you take a function multiplied by a constant and you need to find some antiderivative, you basically, you can take the constant out, so it's the constant, times the indefinite integral of the function. Property that you're gonna be using continuously. So what this is telling me that if you have a constant inside the integral, you basically can take it out. It has to be a constant. You cannot take a variable. So if you have x times f of x, you cannot take the x out. It has to be a constant function. The second property of the integral is, again, suppose you have a function x squared, you know, it's antiderivative. You multiply it by four, we know what's antiderivative. But see, I add something else to it. So I'm gonna create a whole new function, which is the sum of the other function. And the question, what's the integral of the sum? And what the property tells you that, that is that you can break up the sum. So here is the property. The derivative of f of x plus g of x, the x, and it's important that this is a sum, means we're adding. So when we have the sum, we can break up the integral. So it means I can, it's the antiderivative of the first function plus the antiderivative of the sum. Okay. So we can break up a sum when we are integrating. Now, what we cannot do, we we'll have to be very, very careful. What fails? The properties that fail. We can break up the sum, but we cannot do is break up a product. What do I mean by that? It means if I have the integral of a function multiplied by another function. So if I have the product, let us say I have x times ex. So that's a product, one function multiplied. In this case, we cannot, we cannot split. So product cannot be broken apart. So this is not, be very careful, is we cannot break the product. And that's crucial. 
a very common mistake by the student is to break up the product. Very, very common. So some break it up freely, product, you can never touch it. And we can find a lot of examples. I may actually on your request ask you to give me an example to show me that this property is not correct. So probably that will be a nice quiz question. Okay, but the sum can be broken. All right, so with those properties in mind, now I can go back and look at number two, part E and, and uh, whatever else, 2G, okay? So let's look at that. Number two, part E. Uh, uh, two part G, I did not ask you to do it because I'm going to be talking about it today. All right. So, Lucas, two G is not a sign for it's a sign for tomorrow. So, I look at D at E integral of Y plus five Y to the power seven divided by y to the power third dy. Okay, so at the uh, surface, it looks complicated. Let's see how we are going to do it. All right, I'll go back to you. Anybody did it? Give me any idea. Go ahead, I'm listening. We have to use implicit differentiation, right? Repeat the question. Do we have to use implicit differentiation? No, you have to find the antiderivative. You have to find the function when you differentiate, you get that. Uh, make it so both of them are divided by y to the third. Okay, you're going to divide both terms by y to the third with me is equal to so what your classmate tell me start like this so it looks complicated i can't really find it i have to rewrite it so i reduce it to something simple i can work with so what's the simple so your classmate is suggesting this is y over y to the power three rewrite it like this over y to the power three it's an operation which is absolutely correct we can split the numerator, we cannot split the denominator. So, so far, so good, okay? So equal to, you realize we're doing it, we're simplifying. Y over Y to the three, power three is Y, one over Y squared plus five times Y to the seven over Y to the power three, which leave me with Y to the power four, dy. Okay, now it's really simple. It looked like complicated, but now it's really actually a simple problem to do. So it's equal to, now, because I have a sum right there, I can break it. Now, today I break, probably tomorrow I will not break anymore, but today I'm breaking just to make it simple. Plus, the antiderivative of this function. The reason I can break because the sum, sum could be broken. Now it's equal to. So I have basically two simple integral in front of me and I have to deal with each one of them. The antiderivative of the first, one over y squared, we have to rewrite. And that's gonna give me integral of y to the minus two dy. Otherwise, I don't know what to do with it. Plus. Okay, I know y4, but I have a five in here. But the property of the integral tells me if you have a constant, the constant can go out and only a constant. So it's gonna become, I can take my constant out, the integral of y to the four dy. And now I apply the power rule for integration step-by-step. Step. It's equal to one over minus two plus one, y to the minus two plus one verbatim, the power rule and equal minus two plus five times. Again, 
the root, one over four plus one, y to the power four plus one, and you add only one constant to the end. You don't have to add several constants. And the rest is simple. I will have minus y to the minus one, four plus one, five, and five, they simplify y to the five plus three. Or I mean, you can keep it like this, or you can rewrite it as minus one over y plus y to the five plus and of the problem. Now you can check your work by differentiating. It means we can check as follows. You take the answer and you differentiate. And you should get exactly what's inside the integral. Okay, so let's check that. If I differentiate minus one over y, the easiest way is to rewrite it like that for the differentiation. And I should get minus derivative y to the minus one is minus one y to the minus one minus one, which is a minus two plus five y to the power four plus a zero. So finally, I will get one over y squared plus five to the power four. So if I differentiate, I get that. Now I go back and see, is this making sense? And actually it makes because when I broke this up here, I get one over y squared plus five y four, which is exactly what I have done. All right, questions? Okay. Right, so every student, any student who did not do the homework, please do it. It's crucial that you do those homework to be able to move on in the course, All right? Any other question from my homework? So today we're moving on with indefinite integral and we are going to review together integration by substitution. By substitution. So let me say a word that integration by substitution is the most important integration techniques we will learn. Uh, in the second part of the course, we will learn a lot of integration techniques, a lot, but this is by far the most important. So having a good handle of it is absolutely crucial, right? Now I know that you, we see it in 163, but I will review it quickly in this course as well. So let us see what's, what's, what's at stake here. Let's see what's at stake. Let's, let's say I give you a very small integral. Suppose I tell you what's the antiderivative of cosine x, the x. All right, quickly, what's the answer? Here? Stay with me. Negative sine x. Are you guys, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. It is. Are you Negative sure? sine x. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure negative? Don't confuse integration with differentiation. Is this true? Okay, let's see. What's the derivative of minus sine x? Minus the derivative of sine is cosine. So is that true or false then? What's up, guys? Right? right, it will be positive. So do not confuse them. It's at this stage of your learning, you're very much, you know, you're gonna confuse them a little bit, but we can't. We cannot do that. So the antiderivative of cosine is actually sine, is not the negative one plus c. Right? So that's easy basically because we know that the derivative of sine is cosine. Let me ask you another question, and you have to think. Suppose instead of cosine, I put cosine x squared dx. So the only thing I've changed is that. And my question to you, is this equal? It's a big question mark. 
the sine x squared. The question is true or false? Remember, you have a tool to allow you to figure things out. True or false? I think it's false. You say false because? Because when I got the derivative of the right side, it doesn't give the same exactly. result. Exactly, false, absolutely false. Because when you take the derivative of the sine x squared plus c, what should you get? Remember, we have here an inside function, x squared. That's really, really give us a headache. So what's the derivative of sine x squared? It's gonna be the derivative of the outside times x the derivative of the inside so it's absolutely a false question so if the minute i have an inside function the sine x squared totally fall apart is actually is not correct however if i ask you the following question what's the antiderivative of cosine x squared times 2x dx Back to you. So that's the chain rule here. The chain rule, the chain rule. What's about that now? Based on what I have in front of you. I'm oh, sorry, I have a mistake, don't I? No. Anyone? Connect the dot. Sine of x squared. Sine of x squared, is he correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Plus what? Yeah, plus C, I don't care about that. Is, is he correct? Is it the sine x squared? Is he correct and why? We just figured out that the sine of x exactly. squared is derivative. Exactly. We just figured it out. Perfect. Exactly. Because we just figured out that the derivative of sine x squared plus c is exactly cosine x squared times 2x. That's really best because of that. I wanted you just to connect the dot yourself. OK, so that's the entire derivative of this function is sine x squared plus c. But we did a lot of work to get there. I mean, I have really basically to hold your hand to be able to figure this out. This function have a very, very, very specific format. What type of, of form does this piece have? This is actually this piece, which we call the integrand. Integrand is what's inside the integral. Okay, if we look at it very carefully, it has the form. It has a very specific form. It's a function, which is the cosine of g of x, where g of x is the inside, times, so the format here, you have cosine of x squared times the derivative of x squared. That's the format it has. It has the format f of g of x, times the derivative of the inside, where in this particular, the outside is the cosine and the inside is x squared. Okay, so this type of function, this integrand here has a very, very specific format. It has the format of cosine of an inside function, x squared, times the derivative of the inside. Reversing the chain rule, got me to sine x squared. It's basically reversing the chain. Now, whenever an integral have this form, very, very specific form, inside, derivative for the inside, we use a technique called integration by substitution to be able to solve this integral because we cannot guess it all the time. This is really hard. 
So integration by substitution is a tool. So integration by substitution. Integration by substitution. Or sometimes called U substitution is a technique. used to find integral, to find integral, antiderivative integral of the four, the following four. So it's a technique we usually use it to find integral of the following four. F of g of x. So we have an inside function, the outside, times the derivative of the inside. That's really when we use substitution. So I have an inside function and its derivative is part of the integral. We use the technique called substitution. And let's see how it works. So I'm gonna spend the whole hour to see how really this technique works. So let us remember basically how it works. But it, it's used for very specific type of integral. I mean, we should have this format to be able to use it. Given, given, take some constant. So let's see how it works. And I will elaborate by example. Okay. I'm gonna take the same function we did a minute ago. And we're going to do it without guessing. We're gonna do it using the substitution technique. Let's see how it works. We introduce a variable. Substitution works like this. We first introduce a variable. We call it u. First example will be done with a lot of details. We introduce a variable u. What is this variable? The variable u is usually the function whose derivative is part of the integral, or u is the inside function. So here, as we realize, that's my inside function and this derivative is 2x. We set u to be the inside function or the function whose derivative is part of the integral. That's really my first step. And then we find the derivative of my new variable, the u dx, the derivative, which is 2x. Then we formally multiply by dx. For dx, stop being very abstract for you. Think of dx as delta x, a small change in x. So don't think about it very, very nonsense. Think of it as a little bit of change of x, delta x. So multiply by it. It's 2x times delta x. Right. Now, the second step is we're gonna write, we'll write everything. And here I will write everything in big letter. Everything inside the integral in terms of u. I'm going through the step very slowly, the first one. Everything, and the word everything is crucial in here. Everything inside the integral, we're gonna express it in terms of u. So I'm gonna take this and do it. So this is the integral of cosine x squared times two x dx. Everything in terms of u. So it's gonna be equal to, in terms of u. That's the cosine. The x square is the u. So instead of x square, we're going to put cosine u times. Now I have, when I'm integrating, I have two lines that I have to be careful with. I have to keep my eye very much on this. Now the 2x dx, the 2x dx is the du. So now I have a new integral in u. 
a new integral in u. We evaluate that as an integral in u. So we forget about x for a little bit. X doesn't exist. I have a new integral, and now we evaluate as an integral in u. It means at this stage, I think of this that that's a new integral where the variable is u. There is no x for me anymore. U is my variable. With this in mind, antiderivative cosine u du means a function whose derivative of cosine plus the sine of u. That's fairly simple. So the idea of integration by part is to transform a complicated one into an easy one. And what's really going on from here to here is the chain rule. It's actually reversing the chain rule. Plus c. The last step of the game, go back to x. Because my original integral is in terms of x, we have to go back to my original integral, which is equal sine x squared plus c. So we're not guessing anymore. We're using a very specific technique, which will allow us to find the sine x squared. All right? So we're going to do lots of examples throughout till the end of the hour today to basically practice this technique, which I said is absolutely crucial for us. So are you guys done writing? So if I move the paper faster than you know you want me to, let me know. All right, so let us do more example. Example number two immediately. So example number two is gonna be again a simple one. And then slowly, slowly we'll start making them a bit harder. And this example are made up. I mean, I really, really make them up to work. The power five, for example, the x. Okay, and the question is to evaluate this integral. All right, I ask you, do you see the pattern in this problem? Do you see an inside? And it's derivative part of the integral. Quickly, let me know. Don't make me do cold call. I just want you to see. Okay, somebody tells me no. Are you sure? Look at it again. Look at it again. Yes, okay, Alexis, you tell me yes. Can you talk? If you can talk, tell me what do you see? Yes. Please go ahead. Um, so I see that x to the fourth plus six was different. Um, the derivative was taken, and that would be the four x to the third. Right. So if I want to pick my u, because that's have the form exactly, that's my inside. So you can think of this as an inside if you want. And that is derivative. So that's exactly the picture that we've been having so far. So that's the substitution. And what's going to be my u, Alexis? Alexis, yes. Would your u be the 4x cubed? Absolutely not. You will be the inside. Be, Go ahead. The inside. Would it be the x to the fourth plus exactly. six? Exactly. Yes. And the du. Oh, the du would the DU be the 4x. Right. The du cubed. will grasp the 4x cubed. Okay, so the, so the inside, think of it that was the inside. So now the derivative is 4x cubed. And now I multiply formally by the dx, 4x cubed dx. All right, now everything in terms of the integral. So I'm going to rewrite the integral. Dx. Okay, I have to write everything, and that's crucial. It means the new integral should not have u and x at the same time. It should have one of them, not both. So it's equal to. So it's e right. This piece is taken care of very easily. This is u to the power five times. What's left? If I look. That's my du, and that's the piece that I have. 
for x cubed dx. So the for x cubed dx, for x cubed dx, this is really my d. So that's u to the five d. Everything in terms of x. Now I have an integral in x, sorry, in u. I treat as an integral in u. So that's one over six, u to the six plus c. And now I go back finally to my original variable. x4 plus 6 out of the problem. Now I check. It means I'm going to take my answer and differentiate it. And so the, do I get what I have? And as we doing this, you realize that you really in doing the chain rule in a way. So what's the derivative here? 1 over 6 is a constant. Is a constant. The derivative of this function is chain rule six to the power times the inside to the power six minus one times the derivative of the inside, which is four x cubed plus zero, which is actually going to give me x four plus six to the five times four x cubed which is exactly what I have, but rearranged differently out of the problem. Uh, professor? Yes. Is it okay if you have it? So dx equals du over 4x cubed? Like, instead I of... Uh, eventually, you will get the same answer if you do it yeah. correctly, but I prefer okay. it this way. That's my own preference. Oh, okay. Okay, my own preference, otherwise it's gonna be confusing. That's my own preference, but technically it's correct. All right? So I hope to do at least three more problems with you. So uh, another one, x squared times sine x cubed, plus four dx. I'm still working with simple scenario. All right, this is it, this is three, just in case. Okay, back to you. And this is it two. It doesn't show very well. All right, back to you. Do you see anything? Do you see an inside? And it's derivative almost there. Back to you. Yes, no, what do you see? The inside could be x cubed plus four because that right. derivative is x squared. Yeah, the derivative is, I mean, three x squared, but the three should not give us a problem because it's a constant. Okay, so let's do that. So what's gonna be your u? The student to answer, I don't know who it is. X cubed plus four. That's gonna be my u. And the u? Derivative UDX is three squared. Then I'm gonna to multiply formally by dx. I stop and then I go back to my integral and start manipulating. So I stop right there. And then I go back to my integral. Integral of x squared sine x2 plus four. And I said at this stage, everything in terms of u, everything. I mean, I don't want x anymore in the new integral. Equal to, okay. we do the substitution. That's why it's called substitution. We start with the easy part. This one easily turn into sine of u. Times. And this piece, x squared dx, we always have to keep an eye on that part. That's, that's we have to keep an eye. I realize I have x squared dx. I wanna express this in terms of the du. So I go back here. I said, you know, this is three x squared dx, but I want only this piece. So right there, I should divide by three both sides because I only want the x squared and this would give me x squared dx. So my x squared dx piece together 
gave me one third d. So that's just going to give me times one over three d. Now again, I'm back to a simple scenario, simple integral in u. There is no x that's an integral in u. I need to evaluate it as function of u. One over three is a constant. I can move it out, make things much simpler. I will have sine u du. And then an integral in u, antiderivative of sine is the minus cosine because I'm anti-differentiating this time. I'm not differentiating. Now I go back to x. Last two constants. And now you can again check. You should differentiate this, apply the chain rule correctly. You should get exactly what we have, what we started with, this integral in x. So this problem, the, the, the derivative of the inside was not quite outside, but it was outside up to a constant. And this should not give us a problem. We can always manipulate constant very easily. But it's always the same format. Basically, it's the same format. That's my inside, and that's up to a constant, the derivative of the inside. And that's really where the substitution works perfectly. Can I move on? Yes, no. Please speak up more. All right, now I'm going to take the following example and I'm going to give you a minute to do it by yourself, analyze it, and see what you guys come up with it. And one of you has to volunteer, all right? Okay, please get going. You have a minute to interact with the problem. Do it on a scratch piece of paper so you can copy the correct stuff. All right, who would like to start? Who's comfortable? Or who can tell me anything? Do you see an inside function? Okay, I have one answers. Okay, first question. Do you see an inside function in this problem? Anybody? A one plus four X. One plus four X. That's really my inside. Now, what's this derivative? Definitely, we have an inside function. We have, we don't have X to the power a half. We have one plus four X to the power a half. That's immediately tells me I have an inside function. So I'm gonna set it my U and it's derivative. Also, we know it's four, which is not a big deal because it's a constant. So we're gonna set u to be one plus four x. My derivative is four. My du is four dx. I stop here and then if I need any adjustment, I will do it later on. And then this integral will become the integral of one plus four x to the power a half. This is nothing more than my u to the power a half. Now the dx, I have to write it in terms of du. But right here, I don't have dx by itself. I need to isolate it. So I'm gonna to divide by one fourth both sides. And this would become one over four d. Very simple integral in u. 
So it's going to give me one over four antiderivative of u to the power a half du, which is one over four, one over a half plus one, u to the half plus one, plus a constant c. Now the rest is simple math. A half plus one, that's what's going to give me three halves. So we multiply by two thirds, u to the power three half plus c. So finally, this will give me one over four, that's a six, u to the power three half plus c. And the last step, we have to go back to my original variable. It means one over six, one plus four x to the power three half plus my constant c and the problem. Okay. All right, we're gonna do one more. And then uh, you guys will have your homework. So this is my last problem for today. Integral of sine x over one plus five cosine x dx. Okay, again, now I want you guys to look at it carefully, see connection, what's really going on, and tell me what to do. You see any connection within the integral? Any idea for the U? Would it be one plus five cosine X? Why? What make you think of that? It's correct. What make you think of that? What connection did you see? You see any connection? The derivative of right, right. The right. derivative of cosine is sine. Right, the derivative of cosine is sine. So it's almost the derivative of this piece is almost right there. So it's going to be totally, totally uh, absorbed by the du. So there is absolutely a connection in in this problem. So we're going to put u to be one plus five cosine. My du, the act, which means just a derivative, is minus five sine x. It means my du is minus five sine x dx. Now I stop here because I don't know, uh, that's the best I can do. And now I go back to my integral and I evaluate. Is equal to that's everything in terms of you and I mean everything is equal to the following. This piece has been totally taken care of. Usually, putting the denominator to be u or part of it is a good idea. So that's my u. Now I have the sine x, and that's going to be swallowed up in a way by the du. So I have the numerator sine x dx, and this one I have to take care of. By looking at here, I realize that I almost have it. It's almost my d up to a constant. So I'm gonna divide by minus one over five both sides. And this would give me the sine x dx. All right, so the sine, so I'm gonna write this one here. Sine x dx is minus one over five d. And now I am practically done. So this will give me minus one over five, it's my constant, one over u du. It means minus one over five 
L n of the absolute value of u plus c. So finally, this is equal to minus one over five. Ln, go back to my original variable, one plus five cosine x plus c and of the point. Okay. All right, so uh, for tomorrow, please finish the worksheet that I gave you. And for those who did not do the homework for today, I absolutely insist that you guys review all this. I mean, I no student and a lot of mistakes come up with those problems. All right, do uh, you guys have any questions? Anybody? Now, the, the last thing I want to tell you, please make sure to access my lab. Few students are having trouble that I'm trying to work with them on it. And if I don't want you to wait for the last time. So tonight I want all of you, especially those who have access from last semester to try to register. And if any of you is having trou trouble registering, please let me know via email or you can tell me now, okay? Otherwise class is dismissed. Anybody has question? Hey. Have a nice day. Professor. What? Go ahead. Any questions? Thank you, David. So um, there's two options for my lab, which is one of them is 18 weeks and one of them is two years. Uh, which one do you suggest me to get? Because I will get calculus three too, I know. So you have to cover calculus three. You have to totally so, cover Cover, cover calculus three. So 18 weeks will not cover calculus three, would it? Yeah, like, um, so is it like certain that my yeah, next professor that, will be Yeah, to... most probably, most probably. And what's the difference in price? I mean, there a big difference in price. And one of them is 70, one of them is 100, something like that. So I think it will be better to put the 100 one, I think. I mean, get... Two yeah, years? because you, need, you want it for calculus three. I think your professor uses it for calculus three. I'm really not sure, honestly. But most probably, you know, they will use it for calculus three. And 18 weeks, it's it's like till the end of the semester. Right? Wait, professor? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. What? Uh, last semester, I got the 24 months one. Do you know how <laughs> I, uh, do you know how like I get 